lies in front of you is a 1998 Jeep Wrangler Sport Mode with 137,000 miles. Now, the Wrangler was initially introduced as a Willys model back in 1944. It was kind of integrated through the uh, post-World War II years, similar to like the Hummer models and like the Gulf War. Now, Jeep re, uh, re-bought the, the Wrangler from Willys in 1953, and since uh, it's like from there. It was initially called the CJ models, and then it was uh, renamed uh, the Wrangler in 1983 after five, vari- five variations over multiple generations. Now, this specific uh, Wrangler is known as the uh, TJ type, um, in 2006, they remodeled it when uh, the four doors came out, which is now three fourths of the common uh, Jeep sold in 2018. Um, the Wrangler has made a lot of various upgrades over the years, but this is a nice glimpse of the good old fashioned bare bones model. So, in this video, I'm going to take you around the Wrangler, show you its nice old fashioned ruggedness, take it for a drive, and score it. It's going to be fun. Stay tuned. Starting with the Wrangler's uniqueness, uh, moving into the door, the only thing holding the door in place is this little string right here. If you take it off the string and lift, it will come off as I will now demonstrate. And like that, it's off. <laughs> Good old simplicity. Now, taking a look at the Wrangler's door, needless to say, it is extremely simplistic. There are no power window locks up there because you have the good old-fashioned crank windows right there. And instead of having a luxurious handle, you have a big leather strap to shut the door, and you have a little tiny storage compartment to put your knickknacks. And just shut the strap, and boom, you're in the Wrangler. Continuing with the Wrangler's simplicity on the steering wheel, unlike most modern steering wheels where you have your Bluetooth talk, or transfer or radio dials right here. All you have is wheel and horn, which doesn't work. <laughs> and for the headlights right there, and like a rotary dial or a little knob on the windshield or turn signal dial, you have this little knob, pull it outward, and the headlights come on. And right here in front of you, you have your speedometer, which maxes out at 100 miles per hour and your speedy six cylinder Wrangler. You got your gears, Nothing overbearing, just simple straight points to give you your information and nothing more. Ruggedness and ease of the Jeep. Continuing in the center stack of the Wrangler, you have your optional four-wheel drive capabilities, which can diminish the already poor gas mileage this vehicle gets. You have your spacious change drawer. And moving upward, you have your plentiful options in the center console. You have your rear defroster, your rear uh, wiper. You got your fog lights right here. And if you move up, you have your very, very basic, yet complicated air conditioning system. You have the intakes from the outside right here, the directions of where you want the air to blow, and then you have the defroster right there. You can move your fan settings up and down like so. And then right here you have your heat level, which instead of measured by numbers and degrees, are made, measured on these little tiny bars on the amplitude of uh, a coolant or heat that you wish to receive. Continuing with the Wrangler's characteristics, you have your aftermarket removable radio right here since the original one has been defunct. If it could pull out, that'd be great. But nonetheless, you have your, it is removable. Uh, You have your very simple air conditioning vents right here, one for the driver, one for the passenger. And uh, another specific weird characteristic about this vehicle, being that it is a very drop down, straightforward front, like a gigantic cube that has a motor in it, the easy pass of the vehicle cannot be read from an underneath the mirror, as the owner has told me, since the angle is so sharp. So instead, it must be placed on the center console due to the practically 90 degree angle of the front windshield. And then the Wrangler, in case it is a sunny day, which it still isn't in New Jersey, as every other video, it's still overcast, no shocker. Uh, but in case it is sunny once every two months and you want to drop the visor, it comes down extremely loosely and um, it doesn't really stay in place because when you go to lock it, push it back up, it'll fall right back off again. So good old sturdy material in the old Jeep. And continuing with the Wrangler's uh, quirkiness within the vehicle, you have your roof locks right here, which you could unlatch and take the top down and go 
cruising down the back roads or down the beach or wherever the hell you want to take your Wrangler off-roading, I will not be doing that because I heard it's an extremely tedious process, but nonetheless, you have them there in case you want to use them. And moving here, there's like this tiny little clip right here. And according to Jeep, it's meant to hold your sunglasses or normal glasses, as you can see. However, it blockades your vision from the mirror when driving down the highway. But nonetheless, in case you don't feel like holding them or simply wearing them, they're there to latch right above the mirror. And one thing in every modern Jeep after this generation, um, the smoothness in the interior is not exactly in Jeep's repertoire. And knowing that its passengers will typically do some crazy stuff and potentially stupid or fatal stuff, you have your last resort oh shit handle as you plummet off a cliff or if you're going through the ocean and you're in dire need and this is all you can grab. So Jeep, just toss that in there for good measure. Moving, continuing with the interior, you have a Jeep factory installed roll cage in case you flip your Jeep in case you take a uh, corner too tight or if that larger rock was bigger than you thought it was. And in the back seat, you have very little leg room for passengers. It's recommended for small children, if not nobody else, because clearly there is about a solid foot of leg room, which is very comfortable for long road trips. Um, Storage-wise, the Jeep is not exactly plenty in case you have a large uh, amount of items to store for where your camping craft won't fit, which you might have a trailer for, but probably a good reason why Jeep installed four doors on the Wranglers after to the 2006 model years. But still, in case there are accidents or you want more people to come on your adventure with you, it's all there right at your fingertips. And one other factor being that it's an old Jeep, you really need to move things with some ruggedness to get it to do anything or else it'll stick in most cars you can either simply push a button or give it a simple tug but in this case you have to pretty much use all your might to get it to move anywhere and but once you do it's in place i think i'll use all of it to get it right back so yeah just a lot of momentum to get your things moving in the old stiff jeep and fastened next to the handbrake inside the wrangler are two very small cup holders, and I guess since the uh, late 90s, cups have increased in size because these are pretty narrow. Uh, but nonetheless, they are there in case you wish to store some beverages along with your passenger. And over here, you have your locking center console, which although it appears very shallow, it is rather deep. But yet again, all the plastic from the exterior, very it blocks a lot of potential space from the inside. But... Jeep made it pretty deep and cavernous in case you wish to store other items within your center console. And one other touch within the center console of the Wrangler, when you open the storage lid, you have three little coin racks for various sizes of coins, which you can stack monetarily right up there. It's not for every single coin because they seem to have excluded nickels for some reason, maybe because they are the least used coin, but nonetheless, in case you want to store your pennies, dimes, or quarters strictly, Jeep gives you the option in your center console. And on the back of the Wrangler, as most Jeeps do, they have the simple spare tire on the back in case you blow one out when you're off-roading with your buddies. In all honesty, I wish more cars still integrated the back tire on the rear or the trunk of their vehicle because it was, it just looked nice and sporty. Like now every single modern sports utility vehicle is either curvy or like crossover and they all look the same. And this is as part of the forgotten generation where no more vehicles integrate this in the back aside from the Wrangler and maybe like one other type of like outlandish off roady type vehicle, but still it just adds to the overall sporty, rugged simpleness of the Wrangler. And as I mentioned in the prior section of this review, um, like anything else in the Jeep, you really need to use a lot of force to open anything. So when you pop open the trunk in a normal car, you just give it a tug this there's so much resistance on this trunk you have to pretty much rip it open it will stay shut but it is the heaviest trunk i have ever used in my entire life like this thing is so forceful and stiff it is insane but if you want to open the glass of the jeep you simply pull it and lift and it lifts extremely lightly however since it is older it doesn't always stay put and it'll fall like so, but in case you wanted it, 
you can use it and trunk wise storage with the back seats up oh it fell again as you can see but storage wise there's not a whole lot but if you want to push it down and take out the passengers there's a pretty substantial amount of space got a little bit if you want to put groceries or a couple tents or likewise it is now time for the interview section in which i ask five generic questions when the person would ask i'm going to buy a car question one is do i like the vehicle and the answer is yes the wrangler is very fun to whip around and drive it's rugged and basic but i mean there's nothing wrong with that sometimes it's nicer to have a very simple car like that and it's, it's pretty fun to drive so yes i do like the wrangler Question number two of the interview section is what is my favorite part about the Wrangler? And overall, my favorite part about the Wrangler is the overall like, versatility of the vehicle. You know, if you want to go off-roading in it, you can do that. If you want to just whip around town, you can do that. The only like drawback of that is it's not great for like holding a lot of stuff, but I mean, when you're going to buy a two-door Wrangler that's like a sporty thing, and you're going to get just a, a bumpy car for like not too bad of a price. So it's very versatile and it's nice, so good part. Question number three is what is my least favorite part about the Wrangler? And that is definitely the loudness when driving. The wind resistance when driving this thing is like walking through a wind tunnel. It is extremely loud. Um, when talking to someone in the passenger seat, you have to talk at a high pitch like this to get them to hear you. But aside from that, the Wrangler is a good vehicle. It just, you can't be expecting a nice uh, subtle Rolls Royce type interior when behind the wheel of this. Question number four is what is the most outlandish part of the Wrangler? And that would be the supposed glasses rack for the driver or passenger who's driving, although it blocks the mirror, as you can see, but still, that's a very odd part of the Wrangler. Question number five is what I ever want or own the Wrangler. And although it is very fun to drive and borrow and whip around, I would never personally want to own one. I do like the vehicle, but I have no desire to personally own one. Nonetheless, if you, if you're one of your friends is, uh, has a Wrangler and they would be willing to let you borrow it to go camping or cruising off road somewhere, by all means, it is a good choice. So yeah. So getting behind the wheel of the 1998 Wrangler, uh, the steering is the first thing you notice and it is extremely responsive to your touch. Uh, the engine is also much louder than it uh, you'd think it would be in the 3.6 uh, 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 engine. I'm going 50 right now, but like I can move the steering wheel at the lightest of incline and it will adapt just like that. It's extremely responsive to your touch. Um, as far as bumps go, you feel a lot. Um, there's no suppression when you hit a bumper, any type of crevice in this vehicle. Uh, it is a very small and cubic vehicle, so you feel a lot, but I mean, that's what you kind of expect in a Jeep. It's bumpy and it's rugged and it's, it, it's pretty fun. I mean, it's, it's whippy and it's, it's quick. Uh, the brakes are a little firm, granted it is an older vehicle, but um, the one thing I noticed as soon as I got behind the wheel of the vehicle is when you're looking from the outside of the Wrangler, it looks like a very short and like, like chubby vehicle, but the hood is actually extremely long it's like a very pointed angle within and it's you wouldn't expect that when you're behind the wheel or something like this like you'd expect it to be kind of like just like short and clunky but it, it's not it's like almost like long it's it, it's different from what i expected like how civics they kind of drop off and you can see everything it's more like a muscle car yeah like yeah long hood one other thing i noticed uh while driving this thing uh the windshield drops off at like the 90 degree angle, so the visibility is well, but it is all right in front of your face, and it is extremely windy out, and you hear everything. I mean, it is a Jeep, but you hear every single ounce of wind. It's like you're practically walking outside in the wind yourself. And like, it's almost like, you can almost feel it pushing back, because the Wrangler, it's not a heavy vehicle, it's this little like, like metallic thing, but you can definitely feel the outside forces whenever you drive it. But giving it the gas in the Wrangler, I mean, the acceleration, it's, it, it, it's, it's pretty strong in this vehicle. Um, going down a bumpy road like this, uh, you're feeling everything, but the acceleration's good, but it kind of like maxes out like in the middle. Um, there's a, 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 the owner of the vehicle said it's only, it's only a three-speed transmission, so it's like high, medium, and low. You don't really get a very smooth, subtle 
increased through the uh, the speeds, but the acceleration's pretty good in a small vehicle like this. Um, yeah, the acceleration's it's pretty good. Um, de definitely clunky though. I mean, this is hitting it fast on a straightaway. I feel it like jiggling back and forth a little, but uh, yeah, it's it's kind of <laughs> kind of tough to do, but I have fun doing it. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's pretty fun to drive. I mean, like you, you kind of just like like toss it around, but uh, I can I can see why people like kind of like these. I mean, being like I, when sitting in like the back seat of one of these, like it's awful, especially if you're like a little bit of a like a motion sicknessy kind of person. But um, yeah, but yeah. I do like how it's nice and tight and it can actually fit in this side of the road though. Now that we've evaluated the Wrangler's primordial characteristics, it is now time to see where it falls on the Lemonless scoring scale. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to give a big thank you and shout out to my friend Jack for letting me borrow his Wrangler for the production of this video. So yeah, here we go. Beginning with the exterior, the Wrangler is simple. It's not bad looking, it's cool, it's small, it's sporty, not bad, so it's a 5 out of 10. Um, interior, on the other hand, is very poor. It is all plastic. There are practically no features. It is nothing luxurious whatsoever, so we get the 2 out of 10 for the interior. Road trip is also poor. The seats are bumpy. They're rickety. You do not sit in them. You feel everything in them, so we get the 3 out of 10 for the road trip. MPG is not too good on the Wrangler either. It is an older vehicle, granted, but uh, that's my estimated combined uh, total MPG is 16, so that earns a 3 on the MPG scale. Storage on the Wrangler is not horrible, but it isn't good by any standards. It is only a two-door vehicle with small trunk space, and if you uh, want decent storage, you have to remove the two rear seats of the passengers, so that eliminates a little bit, but 4 out of 10 for the storage. Character on the Wrangler is pretty strong. Uh, Jeeps have a cult-like following in America. They are cool cars, they're sporty, they're fun to take uh, uh, off-roading and outdoors. Uh, however, there are a lot of them. And it's not incredibly characteristic, but they're unique, so it gets a 5 out of 10 for the character. Wish list is very poor. There are a ton of things I could ask for. Before I even would want to ask for technology, I would like to even ask for power-operated windows, or even a little bit more room to just put things, or anything that's not over 20 years old and basic. But yeah, there's a lot I could ask for in the old Wrangler. Handling on the Wrangler is also... Not too great. Um, you hit bumps and they, uh, you feel every single thing. The turning is very, very quick. The acceleration's uh, very sharp, but it dulls out quickly. So it's not the best handling vehicle, so we get the 3 out of 10. Excitement on the Wrangler is a little less than average. I mean, they are cool cars and they're fun to drive, but I wouldn't necessarily be stoked to drive one, so we get the 4 out of 10 for the excitement. Stupidity on the Wrangler is okay. I mean, the... The little glasses holder and the giant grab handle on the uh, passenger side of the vehicle is a bit outlandish. But, I mean, it is a Jeep, and they're meant to have character like that, but still. It would score lower, but it is just bare bones. There's not that much stupidity in the vehicle, so we get the 6 out of 10. Price on the Wrangler is pretty good, though. Uh, you are going to get a small, fun little off-roading vehicle for a pretty low price, especially if you get a two-door sport Wrangler. Uh, they're not horribly expensive today, so it gets an 8 out of 10 for the price. Engine responsiveness on the Wrangler is pretty decent. Um, although it fades out rather quickly, the uh, acceleration on the Wrangler is pretty strong, so it gets a 5 out of 10 for the engine responsiveness. And overall amenities is poor. Um, there is nothing in the Wrangler. It is as bare bones as you can possibly ask for in a vehicle uh, with as minimal features as possible. So it gets a 2 out of 10 for the overall amenities, which gives it a grand total of 52 out of 130. Divide that by 13, it is 4 even on the scale, which places it one above the Honda Accord for last place, edging it out by one single point. But nonetheless, there will be more to compete with the Wrangler in the future. Thank you for watching.